Hello everyone, my name is Moser Morales and today I will share a bit of my experience talking about building a missionary product team. Uh, in the end of this webinar, I hope you will see something different and you will learn something. And also I will count with any type of feedback you have because with that, I will keep learning and I will keep improving all my skills, okay? Before we start, I just would like to share this sentence, very nice from Mark Kagan, explaining a bit of missionary team. So as you can see, teams of missionaries, they are very engaged, they are motivated, they really understand the, the, the business we are trying to, to do something and the problems we are trying to solve. And also they will be uh, connected to the customers. So that is a, a perfect team. And I will explain a bit how to build this uh, team when we talk about product managers and when we talk about product teams, okay? Great, so our agenda for today. Uh, please get your cell phone ready. I really like to do some interactions during the presentation. So just take your cell phone, open your camera, and just point to the QR code. It works uh, fine. Uh, so I will start with context explain a bit of my experience and things I've done in, in the past six years. And I combined a lot of skills and learning from the past to build this, uh, let's say, methodology or way of uh, working as a, a product leader, okay? Then I will get into zero to one. So I will start with uh, how can you plan your, your team? How can you do a very nice recruiting process? How to organize everything? And then how to evolve your entire team? Of course, then we need to move to follow up your team and enjoy the result, enjoy everything and celebrate again. Okay, perfect. So as I mentioned, just point your cell phone, QR code will be uh, this, uh, this model here and you will be redirected to the content. Okay, so to start, a bit of context for myself. In the past six years, I started working uh, in a company called Class App, first one here, as a product manager. But I learned so much in Class App, the very beginning of product, product management, and was my basis. So I started learning from the CEO and CTO, and I built the, the basic for product management there. And in a few months, I started leading the, the product team inside ClassApp. Then I moved to a company called Movili and Wavy, where I started developing all the technical product management skills. And that part of my, my, my experience, I, I get really close to the tech team and also to the business team. So I deeply understand everything related to API, infrastructure of a, a platform was huge. Uh, learning from everyone inside this company. Then was very, very clear for me, I would like to move to uh, leadership. And I went to a company called Pipefy, where I lead uh, two teams, uh, mobile team and also integration team. So in that part, I learned a lot about leading uh, other people, but not very close. Like they are not my responsibility in the daily uh, basis but my focus was in the, the squad, the entire squad and not one-on-one -on -one for everyone, right? And right now uh, was natural to, to move forward after you lead some team and a, a squad, you move to build your own team of products, right? So here at N26, I'm leading the product uh, team. And now so I'm working in a, a company called Awari, as a product manager mentor, and I was in product school as an instructor. So I think I could uh, take every good points of the past experience and build this methodology for create a, a very nice product team and a very nice missionary team too. Amazing. So the first thing here will be quiz time. That information will help me a lot. Uh, with all the data I will show here. So you all have one minute, just point your camera, answer all the questions. The questions will be very, very simple, yes or no answers, and it will be just four. 
uh, really we will try to deeply understand our uh, skills because if you know yourself, that really will help you to know who you would like to bring to your company, who you would like to bring to your team. And also together, you will keep learning and keep uh, improving everything you have. Then we will move to how to keep this professional evolution together. And also what you can do uh, that is not related to, directly related to work, right? Perfect. Uh, one minute. So let's move. Zero to one. So we will start how we can start doing a plan for our product team. Okay. So imagine you are the only person and you'd like to create a product team. For me, worked very well, these three steps. First, try to think about the product structure. You can see in the market, you can talk with a lot of group product managers, other uh, lead product teams, and see how they organize their product structure. You can use that as an example. So you can see like um, head of product, uh, group product managers, product managers, associate product managers, uh, product owners, all of them connected in different ways. So try to create your own. Don't have any magical recipe, but try to create your own. Then try to see the big picture of the customer journey. That really will help when you look for uh, people to join your team. And then you can start looking for people to join your team. Okay? That will be the puzzle, how you connect everything together. And I will, I will explain a bit of each part. So first, let's imagine we are creating a product team for a finance company. It's very fair. We say the, the customer journey, every customer will start with onboarding. Then we'll need to move to cashing because you will create your account. We have a lot of uh, regulatory stuff, GDPR, know your customer. But after you create your account, you will need to put money in, right? Then you would like to take money out, right? You will pay your bills, you use your credit cards, and all of that. And last one, uh, of course, here is a, a very big picture. We can go deeply and understand everyone will do that in your own companies. But here in our finance company, imaginary finance company, you will have operations. So all the reports, all, all the regulatory reports, all the support, everything your customers needs, regarding uh, regulatory, this team will take the control. And it's very fair to say, we could have everyone connected through an innovation uh, mentality and innovation uh, mindset, okay? Great, so now we have our customer journey. And when I, I looked at the results, I sent this uh, research uh, before, and I saw that the first, questions, uh, the first question was, do you know what your strongest skills are? And as we can see here, 61% say no. And also when we ask it about, do you know what your weakest skills are? And 85% say no. This is very important because now we will see that we need to know ourselves to find some gaps. And then we can surround ourselves with the, the best people in the world because they have something that we would like to learn and we would like to keep them closer because they are the best in the, 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 the fields we are not, okay? So my tip here, try to look at your company, try to look to your area and create five, six areas of knowledge for yourself. So here I use an example for product areas. I created here six, uh, areas of knowledge. So product and design fundamentals, impact and result, strategic and leadership, analytical analysis, communication, and technical knowledge. What is the next step? Try to create sub items for each area you created. And now you could do a self-evaluation about what you learn, what you know, what you have right now for each sub item. So this will help you to answer the question, your weakest and your strongest points when we talk about product area inside your context, inside your company, okay? And how can we use those informations? We can create this radar for all the skills you listed before 
and with your uh, sense of how much you know about every every uh, sub item we we created, right? And what we we can identify here, we can identify a very nice area where we really know, but we would like to optimize that. And the way to optimize that could be teaching others. And now, so we will see that is an area where we can inspire others too, because people will look at you when you try to recruit them and you say, hey, I have so much to learn with Moser because he shared that his greatest, uh, when we talk about teamwork, communication, uh, defining key product metrics, and so much more. So I'm inspired. I would like to be in this team. But also what you can do, you can share that you have so much to learn. That's the reason why you are trying to hire people that have those skills. They inspire you too. So now we will be able to connect your strongest and your weakness uh, points and share that. Share that vulnerability you have when we talk about this uh, red area here. But they also share your strongest point as an inspiration for everyone that would like to join your company. So this is very important to understand and surround yourself with the best of the market. Okay, great. So next point is recruit. And here, as we saw, if we recognize, recognize our strengths and surround ourselves with people who really will fill those gaps, definitely we start creating a very nice environment where everyone will inspire and people will, would like to join. So first step, know yourself, and now we can move to the next step. How we can organize those ideas? So we have the customer journey. We know uh, a bit more of us. So we know where we'd like to teach someone else, where we can inspire someone else, but also where we are not so uh, good and we'd like to hire someone that is better than us. Now we can connect and say, hey, I'm very good in this part of cust customer journey. I'm also very good on this part of customer journey, but that part, I definitely need help. If you have this type of organization and you share that with a candidate, definitely they will see, whoa, he's so humble, she's so humble. They're looking at someone that definitely will fit this part of customer journey, really needs those skills. And I think I can help because they are open to learn. So your candidate will know why you are looking for it, okay? This is my second tip. Amazing, and where to recruit? Here, something that worked very well for me, I always look to Slack community because there you can see more than 100,000 product managers, so people that would like to work as a product uh, person. And this uh, group uh, and Slack, this channel Slack, job portal, you can see a lot of different uh, open positions, and what you can do, if you scan your QR code here, automatically you will fill your email and you will join the Slack group. I really recommend you that we'll try to find new PMs for your team or new product people for your team. And now so to do that. There you will see a lot of candidates. You can ask for the feedback, but also you can see if your process is working. So you can share your process, for example, your business case or product management case, whatever you want, and see the feedback. So it's a very nice approach to see if your process is working or not. Another tip is try to do and participate through some process you, you will find there because you will feel how a candidate will, will do in a process and you will talk directly with some recruiter and you will have so much experience and then you can build your own, okay? Then we can move to how I did that. So. After joining the, the Slack group, talked to a lot of people that did that in different ways, I organized all together and I realized our product case, our focus in our product case will be, we need to understand if the candidates we are looking for, what they are looking for, what will be the focus they are looking for. So they know the company, they don't know the company, they would like to join us, the reason for they would like to join us. And again, we will share that where we have uh, strong points and where we have so much to learn. 
So they know that context. We will listen if they have focus or no in something area or in some point we would like to, to receive this experience. Also, we need to listen the history behind. Sometimes they don't have so much experience as a, a, a role in a company as product management, but because of their history behind, definitely we can see, hey, you can work as a product manager because you did so much in your history. You work in so many projects and everything you tell me right now, you tell me right now, is amazing history. Definitely you develop a lot of skills of product management. Of course, you don't have the title right now. You are not working in this role right now, but it's fine because you told me your projects. I know you can handle it. Next is about experience. So we need to validate if for our customer journey, if for the skills we want to learn and the skills we'd like to teach, they have those skills back too, and they are available to learn and teach. Amazing uh, point to create a missionary team is to see this uh, win-win relationship, okay? Then, of course, data analysis, very good point to, to connect with the, the team you will create. And most important, communication skills, great. Perfect. So the product case, I always will try to focus, will be to understand those uh, bullet points here. So now let's imagine we select the right people. The key here is to know who we are looking for. And we know because we have the customer journey, we have the skills of the team. We know that the, the strongest point of the entire team we have right now, if it's just you, that's fine. Where you are very good and each customer journey you are okay with it, and who you are looking for, and why you are looking for. So with that connection, let's say we selected the best. So now we have a team and we need to move forward. And to move forward, I asked these questions for you. So have you ever asked the people in your product team or in your team or in your organization, how uh, they organize their professional evolution? And as we can see, almost 8% say no. And now, so uh, if they do some meetings or something not related, like directly related to the work, uh, to work, and we saw that almost 60% say no. So I will share a bit how to do both of this. And I hope that we'll increase this number for uh, our late, uh, later survey after the webinar. Okay, great. So now organize and evolve. So in, in that step, we already have our team, we already hired them, and we need to organize them, we need to evolve them, we need to follow up. Great. So what worked very well for me and for our team here is organize one-on-ones 30 minutes every week. What I did, I selected a huge um, number of slots here. So everyone in the team, could go there and select one space, one slot here. After we did that one time, we keep that regularly every week. And what will be the focus on our one-on-ones? And here, uh, sorry, our documents in Portuguese, but what really important, really important here is one thing uh, I look at every day about Head Calcander, uh, King Scott book, which is, we really need to understand what motivates everyone in our team. So sometimes what motivates me is totally different for someone in my team. And now so it's our uh, job to help everyone in our team to go further, to take the next step in what they want to, to, to have in the next month or in the next year. And it doesn't matter if we'll be inside here right now or if they, their dreams are something like, hey, I would like to open my own business. It's our job as a leaders, and it's our job if we, will, we want to create a missionary team, we need to get very close, and we need to help them to uh, keep uh, the next step into their dreams, okay? Perfect. Next point here is what we can talk about it, where to start in our one-on-ones. For me, if someone asked about my personal life, about my wife, or about my dogs, about boat, I would be so uh, happy in the moment. And the entire meeting will be amazing because I know you are 
uh, thinking about Moser. You are thinking about how we can create a very nice environmental, how we can see that the personal life and professional life are balanced. So this is a very nice principle to have a missionary team. So my tip here is start asking about the personal life in your one-on-ones. Then after you see everyone okay, everything is okay in their personal lives, you can move to professional life. Then you can ask about if they have some blocker, if you can help with something. And then if you have some time, you can share something, some nice information about the company, about the team, just to complement everything. Okay, great. And now the follow-up. Here is a very nice uh, thing because almost 8% answered that, hey, I don't have time to create some methodology to keep seeing their evolution or something like that. I don't know any methodology and all of that. A tip is start with a, a blank paper, a pen, and try to draw something. Try to draw what you expected to, to keep uh, following your evolution. And I did that. So I created the, the five, six areas of knowledge about the product. And then I said, hey, it would be amazing if I could see that in a, in a, in a radar a graphic or something like that. And if I could self-evaluate myself and see my progress month after month, that would be amazing. But the turning point here is I need some books maybe, or I need some content. So try to draw a line based on what everyone in your team will focus on. So if they will focus on customer journey A, B, C, or D, you can select some books, some videos, some articles, something to help them to push forward. But also what you can do, you can really help them to understand all the areas you created. And together as a team, you can create something like that. You, can, you, you will create with your team levels one to six, but this is not to say, hey, everyone that is a, a senior product manager will need to be in number five. No, you will create what represents number one for product development, for example, or what represents number two for a strategy. And that doesn't mean everyone needs to be in, in level two or level four or level five. No, you will see, depends if you will focus on some part of customer journey. If you are thinking about your prof professional style, move more to a tech product management or a, a specialist product management, you will focus on some of those sub items and not all of them. You need to keep focus on what you would like to develop for yourself, okay? So if you wrote the explanation about all levels, you help everyone to self-evaluate and will help to make some actions for the next month and how to move to number one to number five, for example. You, as a leader, could guide them, could see where they would like to improve if they would like to become level six for uh, definition and outcomes and emotion, emotional intelligence, you can help them, okay? So this is the, the, the tip. Build this table together or something very similar with that together. And what I used here was number one, two, and three, your impact area will be inside yourself and your team. Number four and five, you more focus on your area. And the number six will be focused on the entire company. So if you say your definition of outcomes, you self-evaluate yourself as a level six, that means every action you do when you talk about outcomes really will impact in the entire company. So as we can see, some projects, your definitions of outcome will not impact the entire company. So sometimes we will impact just your team. That's the reason why your skills don't need to be all level six, okay? You need to see uh, which directions you would like to go and then keep follow, following the, the, the skills you would like to develop. And you can do that for all areas. So all sub items here, you can create the same uh, methodology and write that with your team. Everyone needs to understand what, what means 
level one for communication, what means level four for tech infrastructure, for example, and it's your responsibility to make uh, clear that for everyone, okay? And if you do that, what you see is, let's uh, see this example here, people one and people two. People one did that and self-evaluate himself like that, and people two self-evaluate herself like uh, this one. So what will happen if you have a missionary culture and we show how we will create that? So they are very uh, uh, transparent each other. They know they can share their vulner vulnerabilities because you as a leader are sharing that. So the people one will see these points here of the people too and will ask, hey, I can help you to increase that. I can teach you how to uh, learn some skills about teamwork and communication and all of uh, skills of this area. But that's it's amazing because People one, you share all of this knowledge, and people two, you learn a lot. And also, people one will develop some skills here. But then we can see the same people two have some very nice skills here in this side, and people one would like to improve those ones. So, automatically, the person two will say, Hey, thanks for teaching me a lot about teamwork and communication. I think I can help you with the definitions of outcomes, product development, leadership, and strategy. So we will be a win-win relation. They are in a very safe place, in a very safe team, because us as leaders, we created this environment. We shared our vulnerabilities, so they know they can share too. Okay? And then I think we can create uh, our product principles to make sure that everyone will keep following this win-win relationship. They will look at the other and you see the, the weakness and we'll help them to improve if they want to improve, of course. And the way to keep reminding everyone in the team is our product principles. So my tip here is build your product principles together with your team. And the second tip is uh, try to have a maximum of number of principles and remember that how much I can create. Uh, maximum for me is how many your team can remember. So if you ask anyone in your team, hey, uh, can you tell me all of our product principles? They need to remember without looking to any notes, okay? Amazing. So now we learned a lot from ourselves. We saw our weakness, our strongest point too. We created our uh, customer journey. We saw where we need help. We, we are very humble to say to people we would like to bring inside, hey, here you will teach me a lot. You will, is the best person in this area. That makes sense for you? And the plus is I have those skills I can teach you. They will join your team. Then you will do one-on-ones. You will keep the closer. You will keep your team very nice place to share the vulnerabilities, to share everything anytime they want. And you will keep a win-win relation with everyone in the team and you will protect everyone and make sure they will follow the rules because you have the product principles set up. You created that together. So everyone will keep uh, coming back to the product principles and doing this win-win relation. Okay, great. So last one is enjoy the result. So every week I strongly recommend uh, 30 minutes, uh, 25 minutes, set some time to enjoy the results together. You can do virtual calls. You can try to share nice things about your personal life, some fun facts. You can spend 30 minutes talking to your team, see how they are, and celebrate something that happened that week. Also, you can play some games. One that our team really recommend for everyone is Gartic Phone. If you want, you can just scan this QR code and you will see Gartic phone is amazing. As you can see, you need to draw, you need to write. It's a very nice way to break the ice and get the team very close. Another one is Dragon Bot. So we played that in, in a few weeks ago. Poppy didn't like it too much, but it's a very nice game. You can scan it too, and you will see uh, how to play it. And if you could, you can do that in person, right? So hope. Uh, you will be able to do that, but if you have team, 
all around the world. Uh, the virtual calls are fundamental to keep the energy up, okay? So if you do this type of things, if you do it in a different way, uh, I would like to learn a lot, but in the end, the phrase comes up again. So if you have something like that, definitely your team will be very engaged, motivated. They really know about the business you are working on it. And also they have uh, so much empathy for customers. And when we talk customers, we are talking about internal and external truth. Okay, amazing. So I just would like to present our dream team here. So we have Chris Poppy here, or just Poppy, Eric Nogari, or Nogari, uh, Gus, Marco, and everyone will say Paulo, but Marco, and me as motor, okay? And what I would like to say here is, when we look at this big picture of um, customer journey, I can tell that Poppy is the best people when we talk about innovation, when we can innovate in any part of our customer journey. If some idea comes in your mind, in your mind definitely, if you want, you can share with Poppy. She definitely have a amazing feedbacks. She's the best person when we talk about innovation. If we talk about Nogari, everything related to onboarding and caching and onboarding, not just for financial uh, solutions, for any type of onboarding. Eric is the master of onboarding and he knows shortcuts. He knows how the, the apps all around the world work. So if you want, be free to share your experience. Be free to ask some questions about onboarding. Gus is the best technical product management uh, product manager I, I ever met. So please, if you are trying to do something like learning from APIs, learning how to connect things, share with Gus, definitely he will be able to help. And Marco definitely will know how to organize everything related to cash out and cash into everything related to finance uh, in, a, in a general perspective. So if you have some problem with credit cards or anything that come up in your mind, be uh, free to contact Marco. So here I just added all the LinkedIn's. So be free to scan and exchange information and learn from each other. That will be an amazing opportunity to learn from Poppy, Nogari, Gus, and Marco. And what I can do for this team? My job here is, hey, they are the best of the best. I just want to make sure they are very motivated. They really want to keep uh, pushing forward. They really need, I really need to see where they would like to develop their skills. And I need to be uh, the, the person that we will take out any barriers that they face off because they are the best. So my job here is just make sure they are okay and they will do their job very well. I don't need to ask about any tasks or something like that. It's a, a consequence, right? Amazing. And just because one of my fun facts is I love puzzles, I will leave this puzzle uh, for everyone. So can you figure out the missing number of the sequence? Uh, please take a screenshot or just write down all the numbers and try to solve it. Okay, perfect. So now is the best time for me. It's feedback time. So just open your camera, point your cell phone and answer four questions. Very straightforward. If you saw something new, if you like it, if you think you can apply that in your um, daily routine with your product team, and also uh, how much you think that is really nice content. And then please go to the best uh, channel to talk to me and please send me any feedback you have. Uh, if you want to know the puzzle solution, be free to ask me that on LinkedIn, Twitter, WhatsApp, the best for you. And now, so I would like to learn a lot from you. If you do something different, please share it with me. If you don't agree with something, be free to share it with me too. And the last point is everything I shared here is like what I learned. So it's Moser speaking, right? And it's not a, a point of view of any company or something like that. It's Moser as a product people, as a product person that have a very nice and amazing dream team 
sharing all the experiences that I have before. Okay? Great. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.